Denmark is on the forefront of HIV research. Today we visit Paynham Institute to speak to some of the world's most renowned experts in the field of HIV. I think that Denmark really has demonstrated good academic leadership in terms of HIV research and it's down to the, the, strong, the strong research leaders mostly in and around Copenhagen that I think have a very high profile internationally. Uh, the likes of Jens Lundgren, for example, who's the, the thesis supervisor in this case. Jens has been um, th very energetic and persistent in terms of pursuing some quite important research questions that relate to patient outcomes, um, specifically the sorts of clinical endpoints that, that Alvaro has been, been looking at within his thesis. And that has persisted for the last 15, 20 years. And over the last 15, 20 years, through that persistence and through the dedication and good quality research outputs, it's really placed Denmark very close to the top in terms of, of high quality research into HIV, focusing on HIV epidemiology and, and, and outcome-based research, which I think is really important. What is the importance of the thesis that was presented today? The importance is to uh, provide a research result understanding why HIV positive people get sick, not from the typical AIDS uh, conditions, but from other conditions, uh, cardiovascular disease, renal disease uh, and cancers that we can see happens more frequently HIV positive. Why is that? Uh, and Dr. Borges has been working very intensely with large data sets to provide further insight and, was, uh, and this was reviewed today. Dr. Alvaro Borges, can you tell me what is the central idea of your thesis? So for instance, people with HIV, they have a higher risk of dying and also of developing, uh, for instance, cardiovascular disease and cancer when compared to the general population. And uh, there seems also to be, and one of the reasons for this seems to be the fact that they also have, because of not entirely understood process, they also seem to have a higher or activated coagulation of infl uh, uh, inflammation and coagulation. That means, uh, I mean, the blood easily gets into a clot when compared to other people. And then to shed further light into why those people have an increased risk, we sort of assessed the associations between uh, markers or biomarkers of uh, activated coagulation and inflammation and the future risk of uh, these events. And then what we have found was that people with higher uh, uh, levels of biomarkers, that means they have more inflammation and more activation, they have a, future, a higher future risk of developing cancer and also of developing anemia, for instance. So it seems that the, I mean, the things are associated, but we don't know, for instance, whether this association is causal. But I mean, inflammation and activation in the coagulation is a contributor, at least, to the higher risk that, those, uh, that the, the people with HIV have of developing those uh, diseases. What seems to be the demographic in the world that's uh, most at risk for HIV? The demographics is heterosexual uh, women and men. Uh, this is where, where most people are heterosexual and this is where we see most of uh, the infections happening as well as from women to their unborn child. Uh, 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 men who have sex with men is another risk group as is drug users, uh, although the number of people with, uh, being homosexuals and, and drug users are obviously much smaller than heterosexuals. So, so the big driver uh, of the continued transmission is heterosexual sex and mother-to-child transmission. Okay, thank you. Um, one more question out of curiosity. I noticed on the chart today that some of the demographics was divided among racial lines. For mm -hmm. example, in Denmark, we are not allowed <laughs> to collect um, data based around, along racial lines. How does that work? So it's self-declared race that uh, we use. Okay. So, so it's, it's what people declare themselves uh, mm -hmm. to which uh, race they belong. Um, the reason why it's been collected is pretty much tradition. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you may know in the United States mm -hmm. it, it is mandatory right. to do all research according to ethnic uh, subgroups. Yes. Uh, uh, 
the, the medical reason for this is that we know that at least for some of the outcomes we are looking at, um, th there is certain uh, traits of human genetics uh, that is linked to different race groups uh, that actually expresses themselves in different ways. Can you give uh, an example of that, please? Yes, of course. Uh, there is a, um, a chromosome mutation that uh, occurs much more frequently in people of uh, black uh, skin that makes them much more vulnerable to develop uh, chronic kidney disease if they got HIV positive people, uh, if they get uh, HIV infected. So that, that's a very concrete example linking a genetic trait that is much more prevalent in one ethnic subgroup uh, to a clinical outcome. I believe that um, people with HIV, they might benefit of taking, uh, of being treated for uh, enhanced inflammation and also enhanced uh, coagulation besides uh, receiving uh, the medication that reduces the level of, uh, of, uh, of the virus. So they actually we need to take medication for the virus but also to sort of control this uh, process of activated inflammation and coagulation and therefore uh, have a reduced risk of having cancer and anemia and cardiovascular disease and then live longer. Back in the 80s the, the what people were worried about was, was dying. They were worried about transmission. Uh, they were worried about side effects of, of what were quite toxic medications. Understanding AIDS and AIDS illnesses was a, was a big component. Uh, nowadays, the field is completely transformed. We have a, a whole suite of medications that are very effective through the work at Jens and others have done has really pushed the agenda towards safer medications. So we can now offer people that are positive with living with HIV today, a, a choice of very safe, durable and effective treatments. And that means that the focus has gone away from AIDS. AIDS is really a, an archaic definition that suits an age gone by. For people living with HIV at the moment, it's about giving them normal lifespans. It's about normalizing life, giving them the opportunities that every other member of the public has and understanding what's driving the epidemic. So it's really about empowering people living with HIV to live normal lives, but also starting to empower people without HIV to prevent getting HIV. And I think that's really where the research agenda is also going around prevention of transmission and, and hopefully the, the search for a cure. What is one of the biggest misconceptions about HIV and AIDS today? That is that it is a dangerous disease that only some of us can get. Uh, this is a disease that pretty much everybody in the world uh, can contract. Uh, there is no reason to stigmatize people who is HIV positive. There is no reason to exclude them from so social so cycles. They are humans like everybody else. They just are suffering from an infection which they acquired at some time, at that point, some point in their life, uh, and which, by the way, we can now treat very effectively. Uh, uh, so we really need to embrace people with HIV, uh, which have a sometimes troublesome life, uh, similar to what, how we embrace people who suffer from cancers and other uh, conditions, medical conditions. The fact of the matter is that very few HIV positive people actually declare their HIV positivity status out of fear of being stigmatized. So we really need, need to work on that as, as, uh, as a society. Um, life expectancy within the wealthy countries seems to be extending, but what about the poorer countries and the populations that don't have access to all of the cutting edge research and medication that's currently on the market? Yeah, this is a, this is a very good point. I mean, what, I mean the most uh, 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 definitive impact that you have in survival uh, in terms of life expect expectancy of HIV positive people is actually giving them the medication to control or lower the levels of the virus in their blood. This is the, I mean, the most helpful thing one can do. So actually, I mean, the biggest impact would actually to scale up the treatment opportunity and put everybody on treatment. We discussed very briefly in the thesis, I mean, the results of the newspaper of this new uh, study called the start, I mean, has just been published. And it showed clearly that uh, the earlier you initiate treatment, the best. So, I mean, there is no point in leaving people without antiretroviral therapy. You need to give uh, treatment to them and you need to give as, I mean, as early as possible. So we have two things in here. It's not only a matter of 
offering of being treatments available. I think there was over 30 million people currently infected. All of them need to be treated in the world. But also there's a big challenge with uh, diagnosing HIV infection early on. Because the earlier you are diagnosed, the quicker you can be put on treatment and the better for you. So that's the sort of uh, uh, implementation, of, I mean, research that is still the biggest challenge. How to get money to, to pay treatment for people and how to test them earlier uh, during the course of their infection. I think when you look at the trends in the epidemic across Europe, for example, unfortunately, even with the upscaling of, of treatment access, even with the upscaling of testing, we're still seeing many of the HIV epidemics in, in, in the developing world continuing unabated. So I'd like to think that we would have a HIV free world by the time I retire, which will be another 20 years or so, but uh, I think we have a long way to go. And I would like to know how can Denmark attract foreign experts to continue its impact of excellence in the field of HIV research in the world? That's a wonderful question. Uh, we were very fortunate that uh, Dr. Borges applied for a PhD position here. Uh, and we really were, uh, is trying to attract as many international uh, excellent researchers as we possibly can. And doing that by uh, creating a research environment that is international, uh, which uh, is probably uh, the best basis uh, for providing excellent research. Uh, we obviously have some funding as well, another necessity, as well as, as an infrastructure at the university that can provide um, the hospitality and the environment for this. Uh, uh, but it is a challenge to attract people to a small country like Denmark where people speak a uh, foreign language, which is difficult to understand. Although I have to say, at least in Copenhagen, most people can uh, easily speak in English. And, you know, at least Dr. Borges has been well integrated into the Danish uh, society. I was, uh, I was finishing a master in Liverpool. And then uh, I, was, uh, I was interested in, in pursuing my uh, a car a career in research. And then I basically flicked through the internet websites and then there was a job offer and the job offer was in Denmark. I read the job offer and I got very excited by, by the, the description of the job. And then I came the, for, to Denmark because of the job, not because oh, it was Denmark. But I mean, having completed the PhD, I'm very happy because now you can see, you can actually have the best of both worlds. I mean, I was I'm very satisfied with my, the work I developed my PhD, but also very happy to be here in Copenhagen and Denmark, it's like great. But I mean, I was basically attracted by uh, the very strong research uh, platform that was uh, put in place by uh, my boss, Professor Jens Zundgren. So I was attracted to that because of the great opportunities uh, that uh, I had in my working place. I think that for us to get a HIV free future, what we need is, uh, is really everyone within the community to become involved. It involves finding those people that are living with HIV and giving them access to treatment so that they can benefit from treatment but also prevent onward transmission. It's about increasing uh, prevention strategies that we know work, such as pre-exposure prophylaxis. Um, and it's about pursuing a HIV cure so that for those that are living with HIV, we offer them hope of a, of a HIV-free future. So I think that the, the basic building blocks are there, but I think we're at the start of a new generation of, of research that, that has that at the ultimate aim, but I think it's going to take some time. In the meantime, what we've got to do is just to build on, on what we know and, and ensure that we um, offer those living with HIV uh, uh, as normal a lifespan and as normal a lifestyle as possible with access to treatment.